This video I'm going to look at PAG4 which deals with the qualitative analysis of ions. So the skills covered by this PAG include the use of apparatus for qualitative tests for ions and the making and recording of qualitative observations. So we'll use this question which is basically just a scenario of a student being asked to plan and carry out an experiment to identify five different solutions. So what you need to do is plan how the student could establish the identity of each solution and in the answer include the detail of the practical procedure, any necessary reagents, expected observations for a positive test and the chemical equation for the reactions that occur. You're not required to include amounts of reagents required for each test. So if you want to pause the video and then play when you've had a go at the question. So I'll just explain what's at the very top of this slide. The CSH order, or CASH is an easy way to remember it. There's a specific order that these tests need to be carried out in. So carbonate has to come first, then sulfate, then halide. Now I will explain the, or the reason for the, for the order at the end of the video, but I'm going to use this order in my answer. So the first thing I've said I'll do is add a small amount of dilute nitric acid to a test tube containing small quantities of each of those five solutions. Now remember, one of them's a carbonate. The one which bubbles is the carbonate. It's the only one that will react with dilute nitric acid or any dilute acid for that matter. But I don't want to introduce any other ions that could interfere with tests like chloride ions or sulfate ions from sulfuric or hydrochloric acid. So that's why I've gone for dilute nitric acid. So the only one that bubbles must contain the carbonate ion, and so that must be potassium carbonate. So we've identified that one. So we've got four remaining solutions to each of those, to small amounts of those. We would add a small quantity of barium chloride solution now. Now, remember, two of them are sulfates, so we should expect to see two precipitates or two white precipitates. Now, at that point, we can't say which one's which because one's ammonium sulfate and the other one is a metal sulfate. So we need to do an ammonium test next. So to these two solutions that gave us that white precipitate with the barium ions, we're adding a small quantity of sodium hydroxide solution and we're going to warm that gently. Then we would test any gas produced with some damp red litmus paper. So you would just hold that in the mouth of the test tube and the one which turns the damp litmus paper blue is producing ammonia and so therefore that's the one that contains the ammonium ion and therefore that's the ammonium sulfate and so the other one must be sodium sulfate. So we've got two remaining solutions to identify now. So we would add small quantity of silver nitrate solution to each of those and the expected result would be a white precipitate in one and a cream precipitate in the other. Now sometimes white precipitates and cream precipitates look very similar and so there's a confirmation test that would be a good idea to carry out at that point. So to these we would add a small quantity of dilute aqueous ammonia solution the precipitate that dissolves, which is the white precipitate, would confirm the presence of chloride ions. So therefore that one must be the sodium chloride. The cream precipitate shouldn't dissolve, partially dissolve, but it certainly won't fully dissolve. That must be the one that contains the bromide ions and therefore that's potassium bromide. So the equations now, so there's the equation for the carbonate test. 
So I'm using just the ionic equations for this. So the H plus ions obviously coming from that dilute nitric acid that I used. And there's the CO2 that is causing the fizzing or effervescence. There's the um, equation for the sulfate ion test. So the barium ions from the barium chloride combine with the sulfate ions and give that white precipitate, so state symbols are really important here, of barium sulfate. And the test for the ammonium ion, so if you remember we added some dilute sodium hydroxide to the solutions after the um, sulfate test, and the one that contained the ammonium ions produced ammonia gas, which turned that damp red litmus paper blue. So that's the equation that goes with that. And now the halide tests. So silver ions, aqueous silver ions and aqueous chloride ions give solid silver chloride. So that's that white precipitate that dissolved in dilute aqueous ammonia. And very similar equation for the bromide ion test. So we've got silver bromide, that's the cream precipitate that didn't dissolve in the dilute aqueous ammonia. So I just want to spend the last few minutes of the video explaining the reason for the carbonate sulfate halide order, or CASH for short as I call it. So the reason we do the carbonate test first is because neither the sulfate or the halide ions will produce gas when you add dilute acid. So if you add dilute acid to test tubes containing uh, a carbonate ion, sulfate ion, halide ion, even the ammonium ion, then only the carbonate ion is going to produce a gas. And obviously the gas is carbon dioxide. So that's the one that you would do first. Then once you've identified the carbonate, you basically eliminate it from any other tests. So if you look at what I've typed up there, carbonate ions also react with barium ions to give a, a white precipitate. So that would be barium carbonate. So if you did the sulfate test first, so remember you add barium ions in the sulfate test. If you haven't eliminated your carbonate ions, then you're going to get a white precipitate. And you may be thinking that that is due to sulfate ions. When it's not, it's due to carbonate ions. And lastly, the halide test is done last because both carbonate ions and sulfate ions will react with aqueous silver ions to give precipitates. So they would obviously be silver carbonate and silver sulfate. So again, imagine the scenario, if you do the halide test first, you've got say chloride and bromide ions in, your, in some of your test tubes, carbonate ions and sulfate ions, well, all of those are going to give precipitates with aqueous silver nitrate. So you need to have eliminated them before you do the halide test. So that's why it's done last.